Welcome back to Center Stage, everybody. Our guest is New York Yankees manager Joe Girardi. All right, so you went to Northwestern. At Northwestern, you become a three-time All Big Ten player. You're also a three-time academic All-American as well. Do you feel that your college years prepared you to be a professional baseball player, or were you prepared before that? No, I think it helped prepare because of the discipline it took to be successful in both and to be part of a team and to be expected to lead and do different things. Um, I earned a job my, my freshman year and caught a lot. I mean, we would play two doubleheaders on the weekends um, in conference play, and I would catch every inning. And it just really prepared me to deal with the physical grind of playing every day. 351 lifetime average in college. Not too bad. It didn't work in the big leagues, though, did it? <laughs> Worked well enough. Uh, all right, so you're, you're, you're a pretty BMOC, I would think, right? No, not, not really. Come on. No, I mean, I, I, I think the football players and the basketball players were a little bit more noticed than the baseball players. Well, you got noticed by a young lady named Kim yes. who ends up being your wife. Tell us about how you met her. We knew each other for a couple of years. She was one year behind me um, in school. Um, Love at first sight? Uh, for me. Really? Yeah, I told my friends that after about two weeks that I was going to marry her. She didn't know that? Though. No, no, no. She only wanted one date. Really? Right? She'd just come out of a serious relationship. And we were at a, at a party at the fraternity that I was, and she had lost her earring, and I found it. And went and found her later that night and gave it to her, and it was love from then on. So you wore her down. I did. Really? I got to her. <laughs> I tricked her. <laughs> now, faith plays a very large role in both of your lives, yes. and, and it was Kim that kind of led you that way, right? It was. Kim was the one who led me to the Lord, and uh, I was going through a difficult time because I had lost my mom my sophomore summer um, from cancer. The great thing about being at Northwestern, those were the guys that really helped me get through the, the most difficult time in my life. And uh, I was playing, I got drafted by the Cubs. I was playing my first full season. My first half season, I got to play at home, which was nice, and I lived with my father. Right. My first full season, I was at Winston-Salem. And I said to myself, why am I playing? I have an engineering degree. I'm making $900 a month. I'm taking six-hour bus rides. I just don't know why I'm playing. Because I used to think that I played to give my mom hope. You know, for she her, loved the, baseball. She loved something, and to give her something to continue to fight, you know, the cancer battle. And so now that that was gone, it, I was really starting to grieve and deal with losing my mother like three or four years later. Came home for a week. Pete McCannon um, was the head of the minor leagues for the Chicago Cubs and said to me, he said, Joe, he said, do you realize you have a chance to make a million dollars in this game? I said, Pete, I, I got to deal with this. I, I'm really having a hard time figuring out why I'm playing. And I was hitting over 300 in Winston-Salem and playing every day. And Kim made me realize that you're playing because you have a gift. And, and God gave you a gift to play this game, and that will be your platform. And she always had that faith, even she, as a kid? She did from the time she was a little, a little girl. She's really the strength in our family. Now, let's talk about your mom, because I know she was very important to you, and you, and you lost her while you were in college. Uh, when did you know she was sick, and, and how did the family deal with that? Um, I was 13. And uh, she went in for a doctor's appointment, and... Uh, <clears throat> They gave her three months to live, three to six months. Man. Uh, I tell kids all the time that, you know, your parents are never gone there and here. It's still hard for me today, 30 years later. Yeah. Um, but she continued to fight. She missed things. You know, she'd drive up and watch us play baseball at Northwestern uh, with my father. And then uh, my sophomore summer, she got real sick. And I was in the Cape, raced home to see her. Um, Got stopped coming home. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. I was going 90 miles an hour because I wanted to see her. Cop had pulled two guys over me and another guy in front. He said, I'm going to get him. Stay here. Stayed. Came back. He said, why are you speeding? I told him. He said, go. Just slow down. So I got there, saw my mom before she passed, saw her take her last breath. Went right back after to play baseball in the Cape. And those kids helped me through a difficult time. And, um, you know, my my. Parents were everything to me because they taught me so many different things. The value of hard work, the value of education, the value of a dollar to finish the job, to persevere. Um, I, I saw my dad fight through so many things just to make ends meet. You know, he worked three jobs and, and they were involved in our high school days and they prepared the pregame meals for football and they did a lot of different things. So it was tough. How tough was it on your dad? Really tough. Um, 
and it was tough on our family. You know, everyone handled it different. Um, my dad finally met a, a wonderful lady in Judy Shea um, that he spent like 10 years, and she helped him as he developed Alzheimer's, and they just had a wonderful time, and she loved my dad. Is it true that the last thing your mom said to you was, don't forget me? Mm -hmm. She couldn't speak. She had meningitis, too. You certainly followed her. Yeah. We'll be back.